Good evening, folks. We was, when we first came in there, Miss Angie was playing the song, uh, some call it heaven. I always uh, like that song. That second verse, it says, uh, some says you can't go back home again, that things will never be as good as they've been. Well, I'm going to stand here today and tell you that I don't care how good you think this current life is right here. There is nothing here that is anything like heaven is going to be. I hate to, if you, you've got that myth in your head that this world is, is the greatest thing, I'm going to break your, your bubble. I'm going to bust it all to pieces because our simple little minds can't even imagine yeah, God has created some pretty spectacular views and things for us to enjoy here. But heaven, where he is located, he has got only the best there. And you just think about it. The streets are gold. Here gold is a pretty important fact, a pretty important thing that we've got. A lot of people, I guess, even worship gold. But uh, up there, it's, it's going to be something that we walk on. And uh, then we sung that song, uh, What a Day That Will Be. Well, you just imagine that nail's pierced hand reaching down and getting a hold of you. And taking you all through heaven. We're dealing with eternity. God can take you for days and days and show you through heaven and probably never get it all covered. But what a day that will be. And uh, I don't know if I've ever talked about it or not in any of my little speeches that I make up here. But uh, my daddy, uh, back when he was able to get around and everything, he was all the time looking for stuff that maybe me or one of my sisters would, would like. Well, then he, he might take us and he'd say, just come on with me, just walk right here, and uh, I've got something I want to show you. So my mom and daddy's in heaven because they're absent from this body. And, and I believe with all my heart that when you're absent from this body, you're present with the Lord. So they're present with the Lord. And my daddy is probably sitting out on his front porch in heaven. Every day, that was, that was the way he spent most of his time, his last few years here on this earth. He was so bad of shape with his lungs and stuff that he couldn't, uh, couldn't get around much. So uh, all he could do was sit there. But uh, he would still come up and, and tell me stuff that, you know, uh, that he had seen back when he was a boy or stuff that he had done, and it was just amazing. But uh, my daddy sits there on, the, on his front porch there in heaven, and he just keeps looking out, just like that uh, story of the prodigal son. He's looking out, and he just keeps looking. And he said, well, He didn't make it today. 
but that's not to say tomorrow I might be in the presence of my daddy and of Jesus Christ. And when I get there, I look for my daddy to do that. He's going to come. Running to meet me. And after all that, them nail pierced hands has got to show me daddy's going to take over. So what a day that'll be. That's not what I started out here tonight to even speak on. But that that was just something I, I'll throw in. And uh, like I say, the, all this uh, piano playing and singing, I, I just wanted to add that little bit right there to this sermon. So uh, I'm going to start out tonight and... Uh, in Job, and I'm going to start there in uh, chapter 1, and it says in the Bible, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and shewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and very, and very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days were days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you to come in and, and uh, help me and to teach this and preach it. Uh, just give me the strength and the words that I need to say and just help us. And uh, we lift all these prayer requests up to you and just uh, ask that you uh, have your way and let your will be done. And Lord, we just ask for your strength and your ability and uh, help us and continue to lead, guide, and direct us in everything that we say and do. And Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, in my opinion right here, Job probably knows that his kids, like, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, I'd I don't think any of us actually raised any angels. Uh, we've all, you know, got uh, got kids, and or I hope we all have. Some, most of us have, and uh, but uh, Job knowed that his kids was uh, probably sinning against the Lord, and that's why he kept, in my opinion, why he kept uh, doing these burnt offerings and stuff. And he was trying to get his kids to uh, correct our life, maybe, and and, uh, and see wh what God was planning for them. But uh, then, uh, of course, we all heard the, the the story of Job, and we know it 
pretty much all of us. And, uh, but we know that there came a time that uh, one right after the other, they came and told him that all of his cattle had got killed and, and uh, his kids had got killed. The house had fell on them. Everything that he had, he lost. And uh, so, uh, let's see. I had a, a good friend one time, and he was talking that uh, one of his, his girl had uh, had a little spell. And I said, uh, well, I said, uh, you know, I said, that was just one of your kids. I said, that, that's bad. But I said, just look. I said, it wasn't like Job. And he turned real quick and looked at me, and he said, what do you mean? I said, Job lost everything, just one right after the other. Everything that he had and had accumulated here on earth, just bam, was gone. Before one person could get gone and out of his sight, somebody else was coming and saying something else had happened. I said, you didn't lose all of your kids. And I said, you didn't even lose that one. But she was just sick there for a little while, and she'll, she'll be better. And he kind of dropped his head, with, and he said, Johnny, he said, I, I've, ne I've never looked at it like that. He said, but you're right. He said, so I can praise the Lord that he didn't take all my kids and he didn't even take her. I said, yeah. I said, no matter how bad it gets, I said, it could always be worse. So I'm going to move on down now to uh, chapter 1, verse 12. And, and this is something that I hadn't ever thought of here until I got to looking at this and studying and the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand, thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So I, I take that and the way I read it, I think it's kind of strange that... Uh, the Lord is actually talking to Satan. And uh, it's just kind of a strange thing there. But in my opinion, the Lord has told Satan that everything that he has here on this earth, Satan has control of. So I can see that. Everything here on this earth, Satan can come in and take and have uh, maybe a little bit of power over it, regardless of what it is. But it don't say that here in the Bible. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that uh, Satan can't touch Job's soul. Job's soul is in the hands of the Lord. So he can do all that the devil can take, anything that we have. At any time, he can take it. And uh, so uh, that's, that's the way I read this. And uh, I hope I'm not leading somebody wrong, but that I've, you've got to come up with your own version and, and uh, try your best and and I, that's all I, I can try to do is to try to do my best up here. And uh, so uh, then I'm going to jump down to uh, verse 21 there. And uh, it says there, and, but it was Job speaking, Naked I came out of my mother's room, and naked I will return thither. And the Lord gave, the Lord gave, 
and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so uh, then there in 22, he goes on to say, or it goes on to say, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. So, so many times, I think that, uh, I know I do, I think, well, Lord, why'd you let that happen? Here it is, I'm trying my best to do whatever it is that you, you've asked me to do, but still, you come out and you do this. Why? And then I have to kick myself in the shin there, and I say, well, you know, it's not me to say uh, why. I've just got to live with, with uh, and try to do my best is what the go down the road that the Lord has laid out for me. And uh, so there's uh, different aspects, and you can look at things different ways. And uh, I just uh, try to look at things kind of in a realistic way. And I know I don't always do that. I get sidetracked a lot of times. And uh, so now I'm going to jump on down to uh, chapter 2 and verse number 7. And here we go again. Satan and the Lord have been talking. It says, so Satan, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with his sore, sore boils from the sole of his foot unto the top and unto his crown. So I don't know how many of us has ever had boils, but I know I have. Uh, and things get pretty sore. And uh, you, you just wonder, you know, how am I ever going to get over this? And what's going to happen? But uh, so Satan had control over that. And, and once again, here it says that he had control over uh, Job's body and uh, had him uh, put these boils on. But still yet, Satan couldn't touch his soul. God had hit Job's soul right here in the palm of his hand. And God, God had him. So uh, I'll say right here and now, where is your soul? Is it in the hands of, of the Lord? Or do you think you've still got it carrying it around with you? If you not come and uh, ask the Lord into your heart, my prayer for you tonight is that you'll you won't leave this place until you have come to know the Lord as your personal Savior. And uh, yeah, uh, here lately, I'm just going to throw this in too. Uh, y'all, y'all know our, our situation. We've had one daughter that lost her father-in-law. We've lost one, had one daughter that lost her uh, roof over her head. Uh, I had a blood clot back a few years ago. My wife had to have part of her uh, thyroid took out, lost her voice. Then she had a stroke here just, I don't know, six weeks or so ago. The Lord knows I'm not going to stand here and thank him for all the trouble that he sent my way. But he is listening to me tonight. And I am going to stand here and thank him 
for helping us through, me and my family, of all that he has brought us through in these last, I want to say, four years. And looking back, I think it was Tim Roach that I talked to about it. And uh, when he was still our pastor, I said, you know, and after I started, I, I don't know if I want to call what I do up here preaching or not, but uh, I guess that's the best I, I can preach, so I'm, I'll call it preaching, I guess, for now. And uh, I said, uh, when I accepted that call, I said, Tim, I said, you know, looking back over the years, I can see the devil's hand in everything that has happened. I said, he's, he's done all this stuff knowing that that one little bitty crack that he gets in and sticks his hands in like, like this and then he can do this and spread that crack open even wider. That's Satan's job. He's going to find that one little crack in your armor and he's going to keep tearing and ripping until it's wide as this church. And he's going to get in there and he's going to stay just as long as you'll let him. So, I've had to, I've had to come and, and uh, do a lot of soul searching, I guess, and, uh, and just be honest with myself. And there's been times numerous times the last little while all I can say is Lord you've got it I can't deal with it take it away tell Satan to get out I can't deal with it I can't fight Satan by myself none of us can I don't care how strong how big how powerful you think you are Satan is going to make you out to be the weakest individual that has ever been. That's his power and, and all over us. So, uh, but uh, I had to, when Mary Jo was uh, sick and had had that stroke, part of my job where I work is to uh, mow the yards and keep the yards mowed. I, I was about two weeks behind on my mowing. And I, I was in a hurry and uh, trying to get my yards co caught back up. The company more that they've got for me. I was down, down mowing and uh, belt broke. Couldn't mow no more. Just so happened at the start of the mowing season, I had had them to order me another belt for that lawnmower. I thought, well, that's pretty smart of you, Johnny. So I started patting myself on the back because I had that other belt right there on the lawnmower with me. I jumped off and put that lawnmower belt on there real quick. There was one little nut that I had to take off, and I couldn't even see it. I just had to get up like this and take it loose. I thought, Johnny, you be careful because you're going to lose that nut and no telling where you will have to go to find that thing. Even if you can find another one, where's it going to go? So there that thought was going through my mind. And sure enough, as quick as it come loose, it went down in the grass. I thought, now, Pat yourself on the back again. How are you going to find that one? So the Lord gave me a plan. I took some of my tools that I had there with me and I put them all right there, right where I thought that little old nut had went. 
I got on the lawnmower and pulled the lawnmower forward. And I started searching. There it was, down, down on my knees. I said, Lord, please just let me find that so I can get this thing back together. Please, Lord. I took my hand and was rubbing the grass like this, you know, you know how we all do. I was rubbing that grass. I took my hand and turned it like this and rubbed back across that grass, and that nut, bam, flipped right there in my hand. I looked up. I said, thank you, Lord, for the simplest thing. So if we'll just give the Lord credit for what he does do, we'll be so much better off. So uh, I just throwing these little bits and pieces in that uh, I can't judge you all, or I don't want to judge you all as to what you deal with every day, but I know what Johnny has to deal with every day. And since Johnny has decided that the Lord has called him up here to stand before you all and preach and try to try to preach, I'll say I'm trying to preach again. The devil has hit me, and like I say, me and my family. And I know the further along I go, he he's not going to quit. All I can do is say, Lord, you got to fight him. I can't. So, uh, and the Lord's taking care of us. So I'm going to jump down now to uh, let's see here. I'm going to jump on down, Kathy, to uh, five seventeen, maybe. It says, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore, despise not thou the chastening of the Almighty. So uh, we've all heard this, that, uh, you know, God will correct us and keep us, you know, right where he needs us to be. So like I said, when I was patting myself on the back there because I had that new belt to put on that mower, that new more wasn't everything that I needed at all. So, uh, and God showed me that right then that uh, I needed more than just that in my life. So, uh, it's just amazing how God will work and when you step back and just, you know, take, take a step back when anything's going wrong, just take that one step back and say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? And I've heard Charles Stanley say that so many times. Uh, he said that one Sunday morning, I always listened to him while Mary Jo was finishing getting ready to come to church. He said that one, one morning he was there in his house getting ready to go somewhere, uh, maybe to church to preach or whatever. And he said, I failed. And he said, there it was. I was in the house all by myself. And he said, the first thing I did was look around. And he said, there wasn't nobody there. But he said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? He said, you're up to something. He said, tell me, show me what you're up to. And he said, it wasn't just a few days until he got his answer. So uh, just when you think things are, are just so ridiculous and uh, so bad just step back and ask the Lord what are you trying to tell me and uh, once again I'm not saying that I'm perfect and uh, by no means am I, and uh, but uh, I find myself having to do that a lot and uh, 
I'll go to bed a lot of times of a night, and I can sleep good maybe for, till about two o'clock in the morning, and uh, something will start hitting uh, and uh, dealing with me, and uh, I'll get up and go to the recliner, and they're in the living room by myself. I just throw my hands up and I'll say, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Show me. Uh, here I am. I just want to do your will and uh, whatever it is, you just show me what I need to do. And I know whatever he's got laid out for me to do, he's already there and he has already made the pathway that I need to walk down to get to where he needs me to be. There is no doubt in my mind. So uh, I want to drop on down now, Kathy, to uh, Job 42, 16 and 17. It says... After this lived, lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. So right there, Job come back and he had more children to replace those that he had had to start with. How many people want to live to be 140 years old? I do. If I know that I'm in this world and the Lord's taking care of me, and I, I know where I'm at and everything. I want to live as long as the Lord will let me and do what he wants me to do. But when he, he puts me in a place that I don't know where I'm at and all this, I hope the Lord will take, go ahead and take me on out of this place because I know he's got a better place awaiting for me. So uh, that's about all I've got to say for tonight. And uh, I thank you for your attention. And Dennis, you want me to go ahead and close it out? Uh, do we want to have a song or? Okay. Uh, well, I just uh, want to say this. If you're not, I'm going to give you a few minutes right here. I'm going to go ahead and have a prayer. But uh, if you're here tonight and you've never accepted the Lord's free gift of salvation. I want to challenge you to look upon your life and be honest with yourself. You can sit here and tell me, and well, I, no, I've done that, I've done that, I've got everything okay. You can tell me that, and I can't prove you wrong. But the Savior is looking at us tonight, and he sees everything. He knows everything. So I want to challenge you. If, you've not, if you're not right where the Lord wants you to be, maybe you are a Christian, but you're not living just exactly the way he wants you to, to, uh, to live and where you feel like you ought to be, the altar's open. And I pray for you and uh, hope that you'll come tonight to know the Lord. So. Uh